Okay, in this video, I want to kind of sum up the main points of the chapter, really get at the most important information. It's not saying the other information is not important, but I want you to get the key concept from this chapter. So let's talk about nutrients, and more specifically, let's talk about macronutrients. So we're talking about water, carbohydrates, proteins, and fats. And we really want to focus on carbohydrates. We want to think about those as breaking those down into simple sugars versus complex carbohydrates. And then I want to focus on proteins and talk about complete proteins and incomplete proteins. And then I want to talk about fats and we'll go over monounsaturated, polyunsaturated, saturated fats, and also trans fats. Well, let's look at the macronutrients. So everything but water, let's look at carbohydrates. So for carbohydrates, you have four kilocalories in each one, or we would refer that refer to that as calories. And that's what you'll see on the back of your packages. So if you're looking at the food label. Proteins also have four kcals or calories. And then you have fats, which is how we store energy in the body. And you notice there, we've got nine kcals or nine calories. And that's the reason we store our, our calories, our energy in fat, is because we can hold a lot more calories in one gram of fat. So for one gram of carbohydrate, you got four kcals. For one gram of protein, you have four kcals. And one gram of fat, you have nine kcals. One gram of alcohol, I know it's not listed here, has seven kcal, so there's a lot of energy in alcohol. And that's one reason if you drink too much, you'll start to store a lot of that energy in your belly fat, or even the subcutaneous fat and visceral fat of your body. And we'll talk about those areas in, in future chapters. So let's talk a little bit more about carbohydrates. And let's focus on sugars and simple sugars. Uh oh, went too far. All right, here we go. So now we're talking about simple versus complex carbohydrates. So your simple carbohydrates, we're talking about glucose, fructose, galactose, lactose, maltose, sucrose. Sucrose is just a simple sugar that you would get in a candy bar. So the processed sugar that you buy at a store, that's sucrose. Fructose, you might see that in your orange juice or some sort of fruit drink. So that gives you a rough idea. I won't go through each one of these because I want to keep these uh, videos fairly short. Your complex carbohydrates, you're going to find those in your whole grains, your vegetables, and even some fruits to some extent. And you really, when you're trying to pick foods to eat, you want to look for things that have complex carbohydrates in them. Those won't cause such a, a spike in your blood sugar. So like these simple carbohydrates that are absorbed fast, they'll get out into the bloodstream fast, so it'll cause a big spike in your blood sugar, and then your body's going to respond and uh, release a lot of insulin, that's a hormone, that allows your cells in your body to uptake glucose. Um, that's how, you, that's the sugar that your body uses as energy. And It'll release, it may release too much, and then you'll uptake too much of that simple sugar or that glucose out of the bloodstream, and that can cause you to be um, hypoglycemic, so you get the shakes from it. So that's a high glycemic food causing your body to release a lot of insulin, whereas complex carbohydrates take a longer time to get in the blood, bloodstream. So if we're going along, let's just look at the, the arrow here. We don't get a big spike. So like with simple sugars, we get a big spike and then a sudden drop off of blood sugar because of the release in insulin. Whereas complex carbohydrates, we will get a little bit of a spike in our blood sugar, then a small little drop off as the body releases insulin, but it's gradual. So we, won't, we don't have the risk of becoming hypoglycemic. So it's a low glycemic index food. So those are some of the issues you'll see with carbohydrates, and it's, that's why it's important to um, try to eat complex carbohydrates. That's one of the reasons. That's not the only reason. They tend to be also high in fiber. So let's look at proteins next. So let me go over here to the next slide. 
Now, if we look at protein, um, we're going to use those. It's, it's the building block of helps rebuild tissue. So it's going to help us maintain our muscle, bones, and other bodily tissue. We're going to use those amino acids. You've got different types. And what I referred to earlier in this video, you have complete proteins and incomplete proteins. So your complete proteins, you're going to get those from meat sources. Your incomplete proteins, you'll get those from like grains and vegetables. But you can combine incomplete proteins to get your essential amino acids out of it. So you can combine certain grains with beans and um, or different combinations to get those essential proteins or essential, I shouldn't say essential proteins, I should say essential amino acids. So let's go ahead, let's talk a little bit about fats. Oh, here's some sources of protein. So meat, meat, fish, poultry, milk, cheese, eggs. Most of you know that. Incomplete proteins, so the vegetable proteins, we've got grains, legumes, we we're talking about beans, nuts, seeds, other vegetables, and here's where we talk about complementary proteins where you're combining certain maybe beans with nuts or beans with grains or you other seeds to get a complete amino or a complete protein or this make sure that you get all your essential amino acids so fats and fats are important you know back in the 80s and 90s when I was growing up um, the big issue was stay away from fats and now it seems to be stay away from carbohydrates and, and that's not true we just want to make sure the total amount of the calories we take in we have a certain percentage of fats and there are healthy fats out there we have monounsaturated polyunsaturated fats those are good um, those will help you keep a healthy cholesterol ratio so some of them keep our LDL low and and help increase our HDL so LDL is the bad cholesterol HDL is a good cholesterol so you want more of it it's kind of like the vacuum cleaner of the arteries it, it goes through and picks up the LDL before it can form plaque or, or stay there too long which can eventually form plaques and those plaques can rupture and um, we also have saturated fats those are ones that you're going to get from like animal fats those tend to be bad, they, they tend to raise LDL. And then you have trans fats. Remove trans fats from a lot of our food products. You know, Americans have kind of moved away from that. And um, because trans fats, and I won't go into great detail about this, because again, I want to keep the, the video short, but trans fats will cause an even higher spike in LDL. They're even worse for us than saturated fats. And so you see here our recommended daily allowance of fats we want of our total calories we want 20 to 30 percent or 20 to 35 percent coming from fat you're going to read a lot if you're really interested in this you may read a lot of different books and you may see different percentages it, it's going to vary for each person that's the reason you see a wide range here um, it just depends on how athletic you are what you're doing what types of activities you're doing um, and you'll change this up depending on your needs same thing for protein on total calories that you take in during a day you want to break up the macronutrients and get a certain amount so you're gonna see different ranges I'm gonna give you just a rough estimate and and you could take this information and, and try to adjust your diet based on it but most literature that I've read it's saying that 50 to 60% of your total calories should come from carbohydrate, 20 to 30 from fat, and 10 to 15 or 10 to 20 from protein. And you're gonna read a lot of different books with different percentages. They're all pretty well close to that, but you've gotta play around with that. And so those percentages I just gave you, I adjust myself and I actually switch those out. So I still get 50 to 60% of my total calories coming from carbohydrate, but I switch out the fat and the protein and I get about 20 to 30% of my total calories from protein and the other 10 to 20%, depending on the day, um, those are gonna change um, from fat, from good fats like polyunsaturated, monounsaturated, and I try to stay away from saturated fat, but I still have my bad days. So I hope this helps sum up some of the main points 